Hello YouTubers and repair specialists. Today we are going to break down this Acer laptop. What we had here was a simple liquid spill that hit this area of the keyboard. And what we're gonna do is break this laptop down. We're gonna take the back off and we are going to fix whatever happened underneath here. And hopefully that liquid spill didn't damage any of the other components. So let's do it. And today we're gonna to be using the General S605 General Toolkit, which has a, nice, uh, has a nice Phillips head there for taking off the back. So let's do that first. Uh, so first we'll delicately remove these screws from the back of the, the laptop case. And we're gonna separate the um, the case from the screen and everything else. So let's just sort of loosen up those screws. And just make sure you take off all the uh, special compartments. Um, in this case, I think this one is our hard drive compartment so we'll just we'll just rip that guy out and you can see our nice hard drive right there so we're good to go and on this side of the computer i'm not quite sure what this is i think this might be the ram or something we'll go ahead and just pop that little guy off of there boom and yeah there it is now in most cases with a laptop, there's almost always a, um, an anchoring screw that holds both the laptop um, back and front together to the frame. So that's probably that guy right there. So I went ahead and loosened up all of these screws and I'll just go ahead and just sort of get those guys out of the way for now. And yeah, we're good to go. And sometimes you might have a straggler in there. You might have to just Get it out of there, good. All right, so we're ready to take off the hinging. So let's do that next, right along here. All right, and I like to just drop these guys out with a little, a little whack that usually gets them all, and we're good to go. So let's take a look at the back of this laptop and get that casing off. However, before taking the back off, we should actually sort of loosen this up and try and remove our hard drive just to keep it safe and to hopefully be able to reuse this part when we're done. So I went ahead and undid the screws there and we'll go ahead and just gently pry this out. And there we go. So here's a couple of screws we'll just sort of put over here and that's our hard drive. So let's remove that and save it for a later date. Generally your hard drive is just connected via this little cable so I'll just go ahead and just sort of yank this thing out, detach the hard drive and we're good to go. And on the other side of the laptop you might have a little piece of film here that's protecting that RAM. You can go ahead and just pull that back. And then there's a couple of little clips here so I'll just like slide those out of the way and just jam this ram up and let's just try and yank that out and there it is so that's our memory and our ram and we're good to go okay so the next part we have to deal with is like this back and getting this um, case off the back so I just like to grab it and just kind of just kind of give it a rip and really you don't have to be gentle with it you just have to kind of you know it's got to kind of get it to snap off there and so there was still a screw in there but anyway we got the back off so that's really what counts okay so now at this point it's always a good opportunity to just sort of step back and just sort of appreciate all of the complexities of what goes into a laptop I mean you have a whole bunch of little wires connecting some microprocessors and some transistors and you got some really nice little fine welding in there and you've got I don't know you just have like total engineering behind you know the way everything goes together okay so there's a couple of screws here that are holding this uh, battery in place so we'll just go ahead and 
let's just undo this battery and see if we can get it out of there and that'll give us a little more a little more leeway with making this repair there we go and let's see if we can get this battery out no it's kind of challenging so oh there we go all right so there it is that's the battery we successfully removed it so let's put it off to the side all right so let's take a look at this fan i really don't know if we need to make any repairs on this uh, microprocessor or the fan but we're going to go ahead and just sort of remove it so i'm going to let's just undo these screws to the fan and see if we can't get that out of our way to to work on this computer so essentially those are the fan screws and you can see where it kind of hooks in here with this little little pin so I'll go ahead and just yank that out we'll put it over here to the side and we'll take a look at this unit over here now this looks like the copper dissipation tube for the heat so it spills it off over onto this heat sink and it attaches over here to the to the microprocessor so I think what I'll do is just do what I call a, a quick bust I just basically hold on to this and just yank up on that and quickly bust it off. All right, so that seems to have worked. And don't worry about that, we'll replace it later. All right, cool. All right, so now in our case here, everything seems to be looking pretty good on the rest of the components here. And you can see where there's this, this film. Um, it's sort of a protective film that protects the keyboard that's um, on the other side of this and that's basically what we want to fix. So I'll go ahead and come up here and this was the area that uh, we had problems with a little bit of sticky liquid in this area and so we're going to go ahead and address that issue now and, and I'm going to show you how to fix that. But first, what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to remove this microprocessor, the, the chip, from the computer so it doesn't get damaged. So the easiest way is to just sort of remove these little, um, these little clips that hold the processor down. So we'll go ahead and just remove those. I hope you can see there. These are little tiny screws that you want to get out of there. So we'll go ahead and just sort of remove those. And then we can reveal the, uh, the chip. In this case, I think it's an i7 chip. Um, you know, it's, so we'll pop, pop that off there. Let's move this a little bit more. It should allow us to pull that off. And let's get to that guy right there. And there we go. So now we've revealed the chip underneath here. What I'm going to do, you can see where it has a little bit of thermal paste on there. So don't be afraid of that. It will, you know, it's just thermal paste. And I'm going to go ahead and just sort of reload my tool here with a little something to pry that out with. So there's the chip in there. And I think I might be able, well, can't really get to it. Can't really get to it with a, with a flathead. So... We'll, we'll attack that with a different method. So before we attack this, I'm just gonna sort of clean it up a little bit. I use like a paper towel and just sort of just sort of wipe it down. And now you can see where that's that's kind of where we need to go to is right there. And in this case, I think what I want to do is just remove the motherboard um, so I can see what's underneath here. So there's a couple of screws on the motherboard. If you just go ahead and find them, they're pretty, they're pretty evident. So just go ahead and find them and sort of unscrew them and you should be good to go. Okay, so let's pop this motherboard off. And the next thing you want to do is just sort of, you know, disconnect all of the other connections that go to this, this motherboard. So I'll just go ahead and I'll just pull all of those guys out of here. And you can see where it's going to lift out. But we have maybe this pin connection to pull out of there. So I might have to, might have to yank that one out. And then check out the other ones and just make sure you uh, delicately remove all of this other wiring. Um, sometimes you can just sort of pull it up like that. And in this case, it's pulling out pretty easy. And I can see where I have a connection over here. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'll just go ahead and see if I can yank that one out. Um, 
Uh, can't really yank it out, so I may have to um, may have to be a little more delicate with that one. But as far as the battery goes, you can see where the the internal battery is connected right there. So I'll just go ahead and pull that one out. And essentially, the motherboard is out of here, and and we can start messing with it. Well. Okay, looks like that, that connection popped off, so we're good to go there. It plugs right back into this, this little slot right here. And the only other thing we have to worry about is this one down here, which I'll go ahead and just pull out. And this one looks like it's a pin connection, but, you know, I like to just sort of yank them out. It just sort of kind of frees things up and makes the job go a little bit faster. All right, it's now almost my favorite moment. What we'll do with this little laptop here is we're going to go ahead and, and fix and take care of this liquid spill area right up here where that sticky stuff happened. So let's get ready to, to take care of that. Now they won't teach you this in, in repair school, but what I like to do is I just like to have like a, a nice kind of a lukewarm, uh, kind of slow flowing water. What you want to do is just drop your laptop in the top there and just run some water over it and, and, and gently massage the keys a little bit. And that's going to help all of that, uh, that sticky liquid sort of dissipate under there. And you may have to repeat this process a couple of times. Um, in my case, I think, uh, I think one time should be good enough. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit of response there with the keys. And, um, yeah, I think that should be good. So then just make sure that you give it a nice, you know, just make sure you get that water out of there. And now we're ready to uh, reassemble. Okay, and the final the step before we, we put this back together is just, you know, Give it a good drying off. I like to use just a standard sponge. This is just a just a regular sponge. And we'll just sort of get all of it, get all that water off of there. And um, yeah, let's put it back together the same way we took it apart and test it out. All right, and the final step is just to sort of clean up the computer to get your fingerprints off and stuff. I like Windex, and what I'll do is just give this a nice spritz, and yeah, we'll just clean her down, just like you would any kind of normal window, and that'll clean up the little camera up here. It'll make the display really nice. It'll also kind of remove any residue that might be left over on the keyboard. And it smells good too, so let's just wipe that down. Great. Okay, now's the moment of truth. Let's power this guy up and go ahead and hit the power button. And if you get no response, well, don't worry about it because it might just be time to do a little bit of troubleshooting. In this case, it might be that the um, everything is just not quite dry inside yet. So let's let's address that issue. I like to use a method called the quick dry where I just uh, pop the oven on to a preheat at about 250 to 300, let that come up to temp, and then we'll drop the computer in there for about maybe 10 minutes and um, we'll just dry out those components real quick. Alright, and just a quick tip, you might want to put a piece of uh, parchment paper down just to make sure that um, you know nothing sticks to the inside of your pan there, and go ahead and just place it in there flat and steady and 10 minutes later we should be good to go. Okay you always want to make sure you use proper protection when dealing with you know this method so go ahead and just get yourself a, a mitt and let's pull this thing out and there she is. A little bit of moisture but uh, it'll, it'll dissipate in just a moment. We'll just go ahead and wipe some of that moisture off and uh, take a look at the inside and yeah it feels a little warm to the touch but that's the way it should because everything should be dry in there now 
So let's try again and, and fire this bad boy up. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and hit the um, on button. Well, again, we don't quite have results. Now, sometimes it just might take a little bit of, you might just have to kind of, just kind of give it a smack on the side there and um, that should do the trick. So let's see if that works. Let's go ahead and try and fire that up again. No, no, it's not working yet. So we need to do just a little more troubleshooting. All right, so my last attempt is to try the old freezer trick. And this is after some peer review on YouTube where, you know, sometimes if you um, do a freezer on the hard drive, it'll come back to life. And that's probably what our problem is. It's just not booting up because it needs a good freezing. So we'll try that out. So we'll just slip this into the freezer right here for about a, I don't know, we'll give it a couple hours and see how that works out for it. Alright, so it's been about maybe four hours or so, and I think I'll just go ahead and pull this bad boy out. Let's take a look at it. It's changed coloration a little bit. And you know, wow, look at that. I really had my doubts about the freezer trick, but it looks like it really worked out pretty well this time. All right, look at that. It's alive again. So, wow, that's great. Hey, so like I said, there's nothing you can't learn on YouTube, and I hope you've learned something this turnaround, and stay tuned for the next episode of How to Repair Your Mac Tower.